for the uh, UK referendum, depending on which viewpoint you have out there. But Boris Johnson, who's quite an eccentric flamboyant uh, politician at the best of times, has come out with his intention to support uh, uh, exit of the UK from the Eurozone, going against the, uh, the viewpoint of David Cameron, who's obviously arguing for us to remain uh, as part of the union. That's caused the, uh, the sterling or the GBP to massively lose value. Still four months until the actual referendum comes about, which is going to be the 23rd of June. Um, but expect a lot of volatility and uncertainty in the UK markets in particular. So quite a lot of stuff to talk about in that regard. Um, and the rest of the other kind of global macroeconomic cycle, um, we are getting news coming through that uh, short interest uh, on the New York Stock Exchange is actually at its highest since uh, 2008. And short interest is basically just the amount of stocks that are currently being shorted on that exchange. And some people can view it as a bit of a criterion indicator, you know, when everybody's short, that's time to buy. But um, nevertheless, it's quite an interesting viewpoint as to the overall market sentiment. Now, there is obviously a lot of factors in play just now which uh, could have a negative impact on uh, on stocks, but we're not seeing it right now. Obviously, stock markets are, are, are shooting up, but there still is this issue with, with, with crude oil and the impact that it's having. So crude actually had kind of catapulted that much higher at the start of the week uh, as news that Saudi Arabia and Russia had, uh, had reached some sort of uh, deal to, to um, kind of freeze production. Then you had Iran wading in and saying, okay, we're up to talking about it. Uh, and basically that, that exerted now has kind of uh, subsided slightly and you've actually seen now that West Texas crude has started to drift back down. It's maybe around about $30 at the moment. So um, it's not all kind of plain sailing, not by a long shot, still loads and loads of market uncertainty. But let's have a look at things from a technical perspective uh, to get a flavour of where we really are. So let's start off as ever with the US 30. So having a look at this, you can see we're actually moving that a little bit higher at the moment, managing to break above potential resistance at 16,460. Uh, our clients are 83% short at the moment, and this is good that it's, it's taken above this level, but we need to get above this high. Then we need to get above uh, this potential 55 period SMA uh, before we can start to break up that, that little bit higher. But this is uh, definitely uh, short term bullish in, uh, in the short time frame. So then moving on to the UK 100, we're looking, it's not quite as bullish as the UK, as the US 30, but we really need to get above this trend line before we can rechallenge this level of uh, 60, 70. The other technical is relatively neutral. 68% of CMC Marcus clients are currently short. Moving on to Japan 225, struggled a little bit, little bit recently as the yen started to get some, uh, some interest, um, but nevertheless it's pushed on that little bit higher. This candle actually more aggressive than the candles of the US 30 and the UK 100. Bullish engulfing pattern, uh, we got to be looking at 16,384 as a potential resistance level. 65% of CMC market clients are currently short. Moving on to dollar yen. Uh, as you can see there, uh, well actually the yen was gaining a lot of extra strength there. It's had a little bit of a rebound this morning as the US dollar gained a little bit of momentum, but this looks like a uh, just a little bit of profit taking right now. Uh, 111 spot 61 looks to be the next potential support level. Other technicals relatively neutral, albeit you might be looking at a buy signal on the slow stochastic. 60% of CMC markets clients are currently long by position value. Then moving on to crude oil, West Texas. And uh, you can see we had that negative move on Friday, went down to 28.95, managed to push up that little bit higher to trade at 29.68. At the moment, it's just above $30, but it still looks pretty weak from a, from a technical perspective with the candles looking pretty, uh, pretty uh, weak in, the, in this instance. But the, the tips of these candles right here are indicative of selling pressure. Each time it tries to break higher, it gets pushed right back down again. Um, so we're not exactly getting a massive breakout as we would have liked at this moment, but we are pretty much on that 21 period SMA, but we are getting quite close to the 55 period SMA as well, which might act as a short term cap. 56% of CMC market clients are currently long. So moving on to gold, uh, gold has come off again. Um, albeit it's not like we're, we're, we're seeing any amazing difference in US interest rates, but as equity markets do begin to push up higher, uh, gold as a safe haven is becoming slightly less attractive. Uh, but when you look at the yen, it's still looking pretty, pretty decent. But looking at these, uh, these candle formations, obviously quite aggressive moves, quite a big move to the downside this morning. Uh, 1191 is still that short term potential support to be aware of. And obviously we're miles away from any other potential resistance. 77% of CMC markets clients are currently long. So then moving on to Euro dollar and Euro dollar uh, hugging that level at 1.1105, not really much else to report. 
as quite close to that 21 period SMA. Uh, I'll probably end up oscillating around this level for a couple of days. 77% of CMC market clients are currently short. And finishing up with GBP USD, uh, the sterling not looking so tasty this morning, obviously, with news of uh, Boris Johnson's defection to the Brit exit side. Um, and the things could get quite, quite messy over the next couple of sessions for the pound as more uncertainty bites in. But we're below 1 spot 42.28, 1 spot 41.29 is the next potential support level. And then after that, you're looking all the way back down at 1 spot 35 and change. So let's have a quick look at the uh, economic data. So let's have a look at our market calendar as ever. On the market calendar today, we've got PMI. So the, the Japanese PMI came in at 50.2. Uh, that's lower than the previous one, 52.4, so things decreasing on that side. Anything below 50 is a contraction. We do have PMI for Germany and the Eurozone later on this morning. And then tomorrow, GDP for Germany, uh, Business Survey, IFO, Sentiment Index, Consumer Board of Confidence Survey and existing home sales on Tuesday. And then Wednesday, you are looking at home sales and petroleum data as well. And that will obviously be quite big for any crude traders out there. Well, that's it for me, guys. Very good luck with the trading and join me again tomorrow to find out what happened next. Thank you very much and goodbye.